Well, welcome to the 700 Club. President Trump says the government has too often used its power against people of faith. And he says that has to stop. So he signed an executive order on religious freedom. Many evangelical leaders praise the president's action, but others say it doesn't go far enough. CBN News White House correspondent Jennifer Wishon brings us the story from Washington. America's freedoms come from God. That was part of President Trump's message to faith leaders gathered in the Rose Garden of the White House for a first of its kind kickoff to the National Day of Prayer. Our president is a believer. He loves his family and he loves his country with an unshakable faith in God and the American people. The president marked the occasion by signing an executive order to protect religious liberty. We will not allow people of faith to be targeted bullied or silenced anymore. The order does three things. It states it's the policy of the executive branch to vigorously enforce federal laws, robust protections for religious freedom. It essentially orders the IRS to stop enforcing the Johnson Amendment, which forbids churches and other nonprofits from supporting and endorsing candidates and it protects the conscience of employers who don't want to provide contraception and abortion-inducing drugs on their insurance plans that Obamacare mandated. Employers like the Little Sisters of the Poor who sued the Obama administration. We are giving our churches their voices back. Many evangelical leaders who pushed Trump to sign an executive order call the president's actions an important first step. However, the order is light on details, falls short of what many had hoped for, and some leaders admit they're disappointed. The order leaves out workplace protections for Americans who wish to follow their conscience at work, like a baker who has a religious objection to making a cake for a gay wedding. It also fails to mention discrimination against people of faith in the military. I encourage the administration to immediately take concrete steps to ensure that people of faith remain free to live out their faith, writes Oklahoma Senator James Lankford. And the Alliance Defending Freedom writes, we encourage the president to see his campaign promise through to completion. But other leaders say the order combats the hostility Christians have been facing. Quite frankly, um, I'm not sure there's enough paper in Washington, D.C. Uh, to contain all of the attacks that were launched on religious freedom under the Obama administration. Jennifer Wish on CBN News, the White House. Well, it's great to hear that this administration will stop it, and this is a great first step, but we need to go all the way. We need to repeal the Johnson Amendment. We need to uh, allow political speech, free speech, uh, regardless of whether it's in the pulpit or in the public square, and that is just part of being America. Before 1954, uh, pastors had that freedom. They could either exercise it or choose not to exercise it in their discretion without having to worry that the tax-exempt status of the church was somehow at stake. And so all these people saying, oh, we can't have this, we need to have separation of church and state, we need to go all the way back to the revolution. From the pulpit came the call no king but Jesus, and it's been a long history of political involvement uh, by our religious leaders. Uh, and if you can't exercise uh, f free speech, political speech, uh, regardless of who you are, are we really that free? And it, this, the shackles need to come off. And there are plenty of ways to protect against inordinate sums being spent through nonprofits, and you can have a substantial or insubstantial test on the amount of money, but we need to move forward and replace and repeal the Johnson Amendment. In other news, the Senate will now be taking up the Republican plan to repeal and replace Obamacare. John Jessup has that story from our CBN News Bureau in Washington. John? And Gordon, Senate Republicans say they'll come up with their own health care plan. President Trump won a big victory when the GOP plan narrowly passed the House Thursday. Republican leaders say they know it will face changes in the Senate. And despite pessimism from many here in Washington, the president believes the Senate will approve a health care bill. As much as we've come up with a really incredible health care plan, this has brought the Republican Party together. As far as I'm concerned, your premiums, they're going to start to come down. We're going to get this passed through the Senate. I feel so confident.
If the Senate passes a bill, it will have to be reconciled with the House measure, and then both chambers would have to vote on the final version. Well, Trump's first international trip as president will take him to Israel and the Vatican, but his first stop will be in Saudi Arabia at the end of the month. The Saudi foreign minister says the visit will send a message that the United States has no ill will toward Muslim countries. The president will also meet with a pope at the Vatican, and he's forging strong ties with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The trip will put the president into the Middle East peace process. Palestinians want to create a state that includes East Jerusalem as its capital, which the Israelis captured in the Six-Day War in 1967. Netanyahu has rejected the idea of giving up East Jerusalem for the capital of a Palestinian state. And Gordon, as you well know, the anniversary of the Six-Day uh, six War is right around the corner. It is, and we have a movie for you that will give you the history of this, how Israel faced extinction in 1967, how they were stockpiling body bags, how they dedicated the parks in Tel Aviv to be cemeteries. Uh, uh, they were expecting annihilation because they were outnumbered uh, by the Syrians, the Jordanians, and the Egyptians. And they won a stunning victory in just six days. And part of that win was the reunification of Jerusalem. To understand today's headlines, you need to know the history. And we've put it together for you in a one-day event, May 23, which is Jerusalem Reunification Day. You can see in our hands the battle for Jerusalem, the true story of that war, the, the paratroopers who retook the Temple Mount and declared to the world the Temple Mount is in our hands. If you want to know theaters near you, all you have to do is go to that website, in our hands, 1967.com. Uh, type in your zip code and you can see theaters near you. There's also information on the site how you can buy bulk tickets or a group can go. Uh, get informed. You need to be informed in order to understand what's going on today.